What's good for the goose is totally good for the gander. <laughs> What's up, dudes? I just woke up. You want to see how I take my coffee today? Creamy. French vanilla. Yeah. Uh, I just woke up. I'm literally like... <clears throat> Yeah, I just, just woke up. I heard what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Then I heard... Mm, I was listening to Maps by Yeah, Yeah, Yes. Okay, I just looked over. I'm looking at this tarot deck. Alright. Nothing here. What's up, dudes? Trying to wake up. Trying to remember myself. Yeah, coffee's helping me. Hey, we got a lady. We got to come in quick with a hockey stick. Okay. Tell us more. Animal totem tarot. What do you have to say? Oh, my God. I hope I caught that. Dude, that, like, popped... And it spun, and then it fell down. Oh, what's up, dude? Nine of Pentacles. Nothing I've just been watching for freaking ever. Uh-huh. Now we have somebody who's been watching for freaking ever. Oh, Cancer Energy. We have a chariot coming in here. Super fast. Somebody may have said, uh-oh, yeah, I think you might suffer from narcissist abuse. I saw it happen. I'm coming in fast. I heard killer whales. Huh? <coughs> Somebody may have just needed to clear out a final thing and now here they come. They may say, wait, they don't love you like I love you. Okay. This person has been trying to sack themselves up to come in for a long time. Seven of Cups. There's all these options, all these things. There might be a party. There might be a list of people. I hear pentagram. I hear pen pencil box. My pencil box. Somebody may have drawn a pentagram on their pencil box when they were a kid. <laughs> this emperor. <laughs> <laughs> I hear a little star laid the cards out. Okay, what's inside the box, Dottie? Alright. We have the Emperor showing up, checking out his dream girl. Yeah, alright. The butterfly. Yeah, alright. Could have an Emperor who was stuck in a dark night. Yeah. He might have been cheated on by the bitch in his bowling league. He's ready to move on. Somebody may want to go bowling. Yeah, this is the Emperor. He's decided he totally wants to knock socks and balls. Yeah, with the butterfly. Ooh. Yeah, this masculine may find a new uh, a new feminine they want to knock socks and balls with. Yeah. They may realize they had a past life with. Uh -huh. Might be the Starseed Flapper or Eleanor. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at that hill in the background, and I'm looking at this. I have bananas and peaches. Bananas and peaches. Oh, this emperor mm -hmm. may have kind of an issue with food. Yeah. They may not have been around. You may have been raised uh, poor, something like that. May not have had food security in their culture, whatever it is, yeah. This emperor made a pig doubt, literally, on a certain kind of fruit, ate so much that they puked, yeah. That's because they didn't, yeah. And they did it as an adult, yeah. They're finally like, hey, look at I have access to all those bananas and peaches. Might have hurled. Uh, I hear Hurley. I hear Hurl. I hear Hurley. 
Dingling, we're knocking socks and balls over here. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> right. Yeah, this emperor has decided. Yeah, they ascended up in a vibration. Something just recently happened. It might have been some sort of moon magic. They may have seen something, figured something out, found out a truth. Whatever it is, yeah, it ascended this emperor up. Yep, now he's an emperor status. He may have gone from mortified to empowered emperor. All right. He might have finally come out of his dark night. Yeah, because this totally cool feminine who makes him feel all fresh and neat. Yeah. Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment. It's my dream person. Yeah. Here we have the Eight of Cups. Yeah, remember we saw the Seven of Cups too? Those were all those options, a party or something, a guest list might be being made, something like that. Yep, seven, eight, nine are here. Yeah. Darlings. Cups are wonderful. Yeah, the higher you go, the, the better you are. Yes. So this person has decided, yeah, I'm going to my nine of cups, my wish fulfillment. Somebody might move. They may travel to somebody. Yeah, it might be a, a difficult travel, but it might be worth it. Yeah, I heard the sockeye salmon are spawning. Somebody may go salmon fishing. Something like that. All right, final message. From... <laughs> yeah, check it out. This brand new beginning has just smacked you in the face, Dolly. Yeah, my head dropped in from nowhere. Okay. Spirit's bringing together two light workers. Okay. We may have a very creative person. Mm hmm Yeah, I hear the fire bug. Yeah. All right. Ace wants a very passionate uh, person. Yeah. We could have a spectrum person. Yeah. So, guys, for me, yeah. I just have this block. It's not that I don't try. It's not that I... Uh, I'm dumb. Nothing like that. I can make a ton of money. I have really great ideas. Yeah. But I just have a problem with numbers. I have a problem with... Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to blow my nose. Okay. Some of these ex may have wasted a bunch of their money. They be on drugs. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm supposed to find a counterpart that's good with numbers and technology because I have a block on it, yeah. And believe me, I've read the Idiot's Guide to Everything. I hear Gideon, listen to this. Yeah. Somebody could be dyslexic. Mm-hmm. All right. Spirit's trying to bring in a counterpart, all right? This is the great big thing. All right, somebody may realize, yeah. So there are people like me, I'm super creative, highly intelligent, have always been in like gifted programs, that kind of stuff, uh, with the arts, with uh, like English class, like those things were what I was really great in, yeah. And I fucking sucked at math, yeah. So we have a lot of, mm -hmm, Yeah, sometimes I'll still come in my fingers. It's true. Uh, my BFF's that way, too. We went to the same elementary school. We were in the same classes all the way until uh, sixth grade when they decided to split us up. Yeah, but... Uh, she counts on her fingers, too. It was something on the way we learned as a child. Yeah. I saw that. Did you see that orb? <laughs> yeah. It's the truth, dudes. Yeah. SOS, send help. Will you count my beans? Will you tell me where to put them? Mm -hmm. I don't have any major investments. No, uh, people in my past uh, kind of blew my money. They didn't really help me. 
So if you're somebody uh, who kind of has a block like that, Spirit is trying to send in your divine counterpart. So for me, it would probably be someone who knows something about tech, technology, who knows something about money, investments. Like, uh, it's not like I, I can go to the store and spend some money if I need to. Yeah. I'm talking like next level stuff. Which is frustrating for me, because I can bring in a shit ton of money. I just don't know what to do with it after. Yeah. Oh, I also noticed. Yes, yeah, somebody else might be noticing. Mm -hmm. Remember when I channeled? Yeah. All those politicians that are about to get spanked for insider trade. Uh-huh. I hear my trainer. Mm -hmm. Insider trading. It happened, dudes. Yeah. It happened after I channeled it, too. So there's some proof. Yeah, it's happening now. Uh, apparently. Yeah. Just like I channeled. Yeah. Because Spirit uses me as a boombox to broadcast messages. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Somebody's having an aha moment. Yeah. Mew Mew! Mew Mew needs help! Because here I come. Alright. So the Ace of Pentacles is the shitty new beginning. Mm -hmm. We could have a masculine. Yeah. Who's been on their own. They've been doing their own thing. They've been keeping their head down. Nose to the grindstone. Mm -hmm. Just doing their own thing. Yeah. They might have got over a big cycle. A big thing. Spirit might have brought in a new, fun, artistic thing that brings in a lot of money. Uh-huh. I hear, she's got legs. She knows how to use them. My firebug. Yeah, all right. This mask on might have been brought back. <laughs> spiritually brought back to life. Yeah. Because his counterpart needs them. Mm-hmm. So this mask on has been creating something, spirit, their gods, everything has been bringing together this new thing, this shitty new beginning. Mm -hmm. It's a dung beetle. He's rolling a pile of shit. And everybody's like, what have you been doing forever? Yeah. This might be the poet. Yeah. Poetry? You're going to college for poetry? Yeah. Well, finally, the universe has called upon the poets, and this dude's like, fuck, yeah. I've been prepared for this for fucking ever. All right? This could be a rapper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all the work this masculine has done, mm-hmm. He just needed to ascend up into emperor status. Really step into, mm-hmm, this BDE energy. Yeah. BDE, big dick energy. Yeah, that's what it means. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a dick to have big dick energy. No. Yeah, spirit sent this. Masculine on a spiritual awakening. He may have reached enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And he's standing in his power. So now he can come in. There's a new thing for both of these. Yeah. The feminine might be his muse. He may uh, take care of her. Uh, pentacles are a substantial thing. They're like a real thing, something you can hold, something that's mm -hmm, concrete, I hear. Yeah. I heard Joey by Concrete Bond. Joey, I'm not angry anymore. Yeah, Joey was the name of my wiener dog. Oxen might mean something. Munich, Germany might mean something. I went to Munich when I was backpacking around Europe. I went to Munich and dudes. Oh my, I found my dog's motherland. Yeah. Everybody had a wiener dog. Yeah. Oh my God, you dudes. Yeah, I was traveling with my friend. We had, we had a Eurorail pass. Yeah, Eurorail took it. So if you've never been to Europe, and this was 23 years ago, dudes. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. 
You, I don't know if you can still even do it. You used to be able to, I'm sure you can. You used to be able to buy this pass called the Eurail Pass. Mm hmm. And it was, now imagine a lot of people, it's hard to like kind of knuckle down the well, actual size of geography in your head, especially as an American when you're born in such a huge country like the United States. You kind of assume other countries are just as big as your country even when you looked on a globe and, and you, you can see that that country is smaller yeah but actually being there mm -hmm, riding a train and saying oh my god i can get on a train yeah so yeah it was a great example it was a big grinder in my head mm -hmm. germany just you know kind of average landmass is the size of Minnesota and Wisconsin put together. That's it. Yeah. What? Yeah. Can you imagine Minnesota and Wisconsin just saying we're going to fuck the world over in World War II? I mean, can you imagine Governor Walls just going batshit and just like So that was something we learned, uh-huh. Just how, uh, through that trip for myself, I had paradigm shifts on how small the world was and then how big the world was, and then how small it was, and then how big it was. And it kept getting smaller, and then it kept getting bigger. It was smaller, and then it kept getting older. And, oh my God, yeah, I come from a country where besides, um, some Native American things. Yeah, we don't have big, uh, old structures. Yeah, I mean, it blew my mind. I could be walking around Rome, and this fucking pillar's like a thousand years old. Yeah. Oh my God, somebody's got their moped leaned up against this random pillar. I wonder how old that pillar is. Like, yeah. All right. So yeah, my friend and I, Let's go to Germany. All right. We go to Munich. We stumble upon this totally like weird park. We're, we're like, oh my God. Yeah, well, this is amazing. Yeah. There was um, a dude. There was like this creek thing. Minnehaha Creek might mean something. Minnehaha Falls might mean something. I'm just going to pop, uh, pop some visual cards while I tell you this story. Uh, there's this dude surfing in this creek. It was like this never-ending like surf spot. He was just like, oh, I get it, dude. And then there's this, this group of dudes that were just on a bridge plugged in to a portable amp. And, oh, what's up, Intense Dude? Okay. Somebody's thinking about mind games, maybe pool. What's up? Uh-huh. I hear Blue's Alley. Okay. Uh. And they didn't speak, you could tell, they didn't speak any English. No, but they were plugged in and they were playing Beatles. Yep. The Beatles. Mm hmm I'm like, this is amazing. It was before October, uh, Oktoberfest, but it was like a pre-Octoberfest. So there was, there was some kind of, there was like this weird tent and I'm like, is there like constantly an Oktoberfest in, in Germany? What is this? <laughs> and then dudes, yeah, my friend and I, we were like, this is so, this park is just really interesting. Yeah, and then my friend, yeah, we kind of walked into this, this meadowy kind of area and there was all these Germans sunbathing. And just kind of walking. And my friend said, holy shit! Yeah, somebody's really nervous. Uh-huh. That's this dude. Yeah, all up in his feels. All right. Yeah. This is the friend. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. We're on the street. Your BFF is coming into town, darling. Yeah, somebody may get a new person that I like to hang out with. All right. Somebody may, uh, mm-hmm. May laugh a lot. Yeah. So my friend was like, 
Oh my god, Molly. This is like a nude park. Everybody's naked! Jackpot! <laughs> you can feel them, like... Yeah. Power. Alright, lean power pizza. Uh-huh, I hear pizza. I had come to the pizza place. Alright. He's like, oh my god. Oh my god! Yeah, and we start walking. And you can see my friends, like... Total joy and complete uh, your exaltation. <laughs> okay. We have the brat who peed in the pool. <laughs> People watching. Okay. An aha moment. Yeah. Dudes, he thought he had snuggled into his fucking fantasy he's had since he was a teenager. You could just feel his soul go. <laughs> yep. We walk. I'm pretty soon. He's like, now keep in mind, we were we were young, we were in our early twenties. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> because dudes, they were, it was like, I don't know if it was a collection of senior citizen nudists or something, but I swear to God, the first thing I saw was this old lady who had like both her titties flopped over her shoulders. <laughs> There's like hair everywhere. <laughs> old dudes. <laughs> Yeah, I had to play ball. Mm -hmm. I had to play big time, and I stepped up. Yeah, and I got a bunch of marbles for both of us. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, look at this fell down, and then uh huh. I've had my great big paradigm shift. All right. This person may have looked in the mirror. Mm hmm. They may have done the exercise looking in the mirror. That might have been what, what this. Emperor's issue was. Yeah, he may have needed his muse to remind him who the fuck he was. Yeah. You're fucking hot! Yeah, and cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This person may have felt really old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The water boys might mean something. I hear I'll drive my chariot down your street and cry. Hey, it's me. I'm dynamite and I don't know why. This masculine wants to open up to their family. Right. A cancer might mean something. A chariot might mean something. All right. This is my car for somebody who's on TV. Somebody might have a TV spot, a big show, a big something or other. All right. There might be some paparazzi there, something or other. Mm-hmm. So when I see this, yeah, dudes, when I did my, uh, mm -hmm, my reading about, let's look in the mirror together, mm -hmm, where we talk about imposter syndrome, and how, yeah, that's what it was. This person felt like a dork, mm -hmm, especially during their teenage years. Yeah, they need to seriously, mm -hmm, seriously heal the teenager within. Alright, they may need a galactic mother. Alright. So this divine feminine energy is very healing to this person. The name Alice could mean something. Mm -hmm. So in that reading, I'm kind of reminding you how if you have body dysmorphia, yeah, when you look in the mirror, you see something 
different than what other people see. And it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around that if you don't have body dysmorphia. So, just imagine mm -hmm, when you have, if you have body dysmorphia, then a lot of people might not even realize that's it, there's a name for this. Yeah, it's called body dysmorphia. And if you look in the mirror, yeah, you might see this freaky thing at first. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I see, yeah, when you open up your camera and you're going to take a picture and you accidentally flip it and get the worst angle of your double chin. Yeah, that's why I show my double chin all the time, dudes. We all have double chin. Yep. I have animal chin. All right. Could have a skater. I have bones brigade. All right. Yeah, but everybody's busy looking at everybody else with all their filters on. Mm -hmm. All their Instagram filters, all their beautiful filters, yeah. So when you accidentally see, oh my fucking God, all I wanted to do is take a picture and now I feel like shit about myself because I saw myself flipped around. Yes, and that horrific double chin Medusa look. <laughs> Not a good look. Yes. Well, darlings, that's why I filmed myself. I started, yeah, filming myself at really weird angles to remind everybody. Yeah, human beings have weird angles. We have double chins. Yeah, we just forgot about it. Mm hmm. Because all we're seeing is mm -hmm. certain angles. And spirit wants to remind everybody, yeah, especially those that have body dysmorphia, yeah, your vessel is beautiful. You have the same angles as everybody else. Mm hmm Yeah, okay, I'm thinking of, I was scrolling through social media a while back, Pam Anderson, mm hmm She posted a picture of herself, a Canadian might mean something. Yeah, she posted a picture of herself. Just, I guess, sans makeup. I guess, sans. Yeah, just here I am. Mila, you, uh, I, I have problems with your last name, Yoyovich. Uh huh. Just this morning, I was scrolling. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Divine Feminine Showgirl. Yeah. Just went to town on her hair, got inspired, did it, yeah. Posted a picture. Uh, not quite sure how I'm feeling about this, but here's what I did, yeah. She looks fucking badass, yeah. All right. So we have very brave, divine feminine energies that are coming in that are showing people, hey, yeah. Especially like Pam, like Mila, uh, uh-huh. Old school light workers, yeah, are like, this is me, yeah, love me or leave me, yeah. There's times when I'm on the cover of a magazine, yeah, and there's also times when I'm, yeah, and that's healing energy from a divine feminine show girl. Doesn't mean we all have to slob out on social media all the time. Yeah. Here's the booger I just picked out of my nose, yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, it just means that there is healing energy in opening up and showing people the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I hear Mayim talking about, yeah, I was just flipping through social media. All these really uh, powerful, strong uh -huh, showgirls I hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mayim just opened up about, she has some hoarding issues, yeah, and she talks about it, mm-hmm. So we have galactic families, yep, the showgirls are just saying, hey, here's how it is, yep, and in doing that, it's healing the show boys. Now, girls and boys, it can be whatever, yeah, it's not gender specific, it's just for storytelling purposes right now. This can be same-sex couples, however you identify or don't identify. The power of the galactic family, I hear the orators, the divine counterparts, the twin flames, yeah. Now remember, twin flame missions, yeah, they're not just like 
grand love affairs between two people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my twin flame. You know, it's all passionate and shit. We slap each other across the face. Yeah, that's the toxic relationship. Yeah. That's probably a twin flame catalyst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a real twin flame, when all is said and done, are healed people that did the work. And they come together to do some sort of collective thing for the collect, yeah, some sort of project that helps their collective. It's it's community work. It's galactic work. It's universal work to bring forth cosmic love. So we may have had a had to have a bunch of people have some showgirls, showboys, some entertainers, something like that. Say, hey, yeah, I speak your same language. Yeah. These may be a little spectrumy people, mm -hmm. highly intelligent, who say, I didn't forget about my galactic family, yeah, despite being successful, whatever I, you know, successful in what I do, what I, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not going to be a stuck up bitch. No. I understand the journey. And I understand that there's people who are just coming out of the burning gates of hell the burning gates of hell yeah imposter syndrome a dark night of the soul we have all these people that are going through spiritual awakenings have no idea any of these concepts are yeah so spirit sends them over to me yeah the galactic kindergarten teacher <laughs> welcome to soul school you're in elementary school yeah I'm going to teach you how to be friends with your inner child. Yeah, we're going to do all sorts of weird shit. Yeah, you're going to see all sorts of magic with me. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to unscrew your crusty heart chakra, darling. Yeah, we're bringing you back alive. At your leisure. And for free. Of course, darling. Yeah. So we have to first learn how to look in the mirror if you have body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. So make sure you watch that reading. If that resonates with you, if you look in the mirror, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. wait a minute. In the past, you might have been mortified. You might have had to psych yourself up to look in the mirror. You might have had to, every time you got going, you're like, oh, my God. Clearly, I'm the beast in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you have your awakening. You find self-love. You find the Holy Grail. You learn about body dysmorphia. You learn about abuse, narcissist abuse, that kind of thing. Brrr, yeah. When you look in the mirror, you're like, wait a minute. I've done self-healing work. My whole life, I thought it was this weirdo thing, yeah, because I keep catching that fucking fucked up angle of myself. Mm -hmm. I also keep catching in the past I've kept catching these beautiful angles of myself <laughs> but all I seem to remember was that one fucked up angle of myself mm -hmm. and you start to remember hey wait I can see I look a little different. And I'm not as mortifying as I think I I usually think I am. Wait, what's happening? I kind of like myself, that's why. Okay, I'm going to stop looking in the mirror now. Yeah. And then 10 minutes later, you might come back. And this isn't, this isn't narcissist gazing into the pond, darling, Snow. This is Echo realizing everything she repeated about her insecurities, all those kind of things, yeah. People who never really took a look at them. Mm -hmm. At their dream girl. Yeah, people who never really took a look at their dream girl because they were too busy looking at themselves, yeah. Echo is about to be shown who she is. Yeah, a beautiful woman who finally found her own ways. A wonderful darling. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I love myself. I love myself. Hey, narcissist, I found the holy grail. 
the holy grail, the holy grail. Yeah. We look back in the mirror again, and oh my god, did somebody put a filter on my face? All of a sudden, I look better. It's like a tweak. I look a little bit better. What is this weird magic? Because now I look a little bit better. This is supernatural. No, it's called body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. So the first time you see yourself in the mirror, you kind of still got that. <gasps> yeah. But darling, we can go back 10 minutes later, that second time you see yourself in the mirror, that's what you really look like. That's the truth. You really look like that beautiful thing that you think is as a, like a weird Instagram filter and spirits fucking with you and what is this? No. It's spirits showing you how beautiful you truly are, how magical you truly are. Somebody may have had a great big paradigm shift because in that reading too, yeah, all of a sudden, all I needed to do was point it out and all of a sudden I was a giant in a tiny room. Somebody may be ready to go on a fabulous adventure. All right, they're connecting with their Six of Cups person. Mm -hmm. This is my card for a date, hanging out. Mm -hmm. This is my card for like a Six of Cups. Mm -hmm. I hear my companion. Uh -huh. I want to be my BFF. All right. Now I see a bowling lane. Yeah. I'm going to play socks and balls with you. This is for real. This time I mean it. I'm coming clean. Please don't let go. I said from the start that you can take it or leave it. I prefer that you keep it. Don't let go. Yeah. This is the best thing that I've ever had for real. All right. Now I see two wands, a portal. That this emperor sees an opportunity with his wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. He sees her. Yep. There, he sees her. Yep. Guess he's in town. Mm -hmm. I got little Caesar's pizza. <laughs> hey, wanna go to the pretzel factory? Okay. I wanna go to the nut goodie factory. Okay. I like me a salted nut roll. So do I. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right, I just looked over and I see here. Spirit had me look over. Okay. So I see the horse running in. Eight of Wands. Okay, I just saw another orb. Yeah, Eight of Wands. Mm -hmm. Somebody may a veil may have been removed about somebody and they're like, you're fucking hot. Yeah, I love you. Here I come. Yeah. Are your chips so hot for the win? Yeah. Somebody may think somebody's so, uh-huh. You're so funny. Yeah, I hear it. Can I see the horse race? With Hoof Hearted. Yeah, the, the horse's name is Hoof Hearted. H-O-O-F-H-E-R-T-E-D. A car race may mean something. Like a, a racetrack. Yeah, because mm -hmm, all of a sudden, he you knows Hoof Hearted! Hoof Hearted! Hoof Hearted is winning! Yes, he says it so fast, so excited. He's screaming out, who farted is winning? Yes. Wonderful. Oh, now this lean forward. Guess who, guess who's here? The Empress, the Highland Cow. Yeah, would you like to go to the Scottish Highlands? I love your hair. Wonderful. All right. And look at, here comes Jesus. Uh-huh, here comes Jesus. Now I see the big Lebowski. Yeah. I want to knock sucks and balls. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, knocking socks and balls is what they used to call it. I hear back in the flapper days. Yeah, we put our socks on the pins so they weren't so loud when they fell over. Yeah, we're knocking socks and balls. All right. The world is the end of the lesson. Yeah, justice is bringing karmic rewards. Yeah. It's time for this emperor and empress. 
to knock socks and balls, dudes. Hell yeah. Divine counterparts coming together. I saw Orb go over the... Yeah, I think it was going over the Emperor and Empress. Yeah. You guys are making this come together, darlings. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh-huh. I hear... Strike out. Okay. All right. There's my card for... Somebody may have identified an energy vampire. Okay. Somebody may have said, yeah, don't work with that empress. Whatever you do, don't work with that empress. Yeah. We're going to keep you stuck. <laughs> don't listen to her. Yeah, that's, that's a charlatan. Yeah, a charlatan came in, whispered a little something in this dude's ear. Yeah, he might have played the field, field a little bit. Yeah. I had to heal from some narcissist abuse. This is the brat who pees in the pool. Yeah, as somebody who come to your party, fucking dog you at your own party, embarrass you, whatever. I hear Blaine. Blaine? Blaine? That's not a name. That's an appliance. Blaine? Okay. Pretty and pink might mean something. Yeah. That's that character. Yeah. Somebody may have found out. Yeah. Somebody they know, something or other. They might have put two and two together. Is that... Oh, wait, you got a crush on that person. You tried to block all my shit with that person. Yeah, you'll never admit it because that person don't want you back. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. Yeah. So, anyways, this deal come to your party, diss ya, whatever, on the way out. They fucking stop and pee in your pool just to rub it in even more. Yeah, spirits booting that person out of your life. All right. Shuggy! Did you get yourself a hoe? Yeah, I spirit cut the cord of that. Mm -hmm. This person may have had an ex in the past. Yeah, very abusive. Mm -hmm. Finally ready. They may have talked to a therapist. Yeah, Shuggy got himself a hoe. Yeah. Yeah, he don't want a hoe no more. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a great big thing. Somebody may go to an award ceremony, something like that. They found the perfect date. Somebody they respect. All right. I hear you're beautiful. Yes, I want to promote you, my darling peacock. All right. And somebody's seeing signs. Yeah, they're having starseed activation. Okay, this is my card for seeing signs from the universe. And this is my card for DNA activation. Mm hmm Somebody may speak telepathically with their counterpart. All right. The Empress and Empress. Uh-huh. All right. Somebody may go from one person. Yep. I hear a faux empress. Yeah, this person. Mm hmm Yeah, this masculine. They were living over in Grossville. Uh, dating somebody who may have triggered them. They may have got off on low vibing together. They may have... That person may have kept this person stuck. All right. It could have been a highly intelligent, unenlightened person, something like that. So then Spirit brought in their divine counterpart. Yup. So when a showgirl comes on the scene, dudes, a new showgirl comes on the scene. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. All the lower vibing. Boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, yeah. If your relationship was on the rocks, yeah, this energy of this new person, whether, and they're not even trying. Yeah, her middle name's just Jolene. That's just what it's all about, yeah. Yeah, Spirit will send in a divine counterpart. Mm hmm. You know, do one of two things. Yeah, this karmic relationship, this expired soul contract, this failed relationship that you keep trying to make work it could be two masculine energies that you're like trying to duct tape these two energies to make current yeah you gotta remember a masculine energy best way to describe it whether you're however you identify uh, if you're a masculine energy you're a plug like an electrical plug and if you're a feminine energy you're the outlet in the wall so the masculine is the giver and the feminine is the receiver. Yeah, and that's how the current flows between these two. And a lot of times people, mm-hmm, 
We'll have this great big mission. Yeah. With somebody that they may have loved, respected a lot. Yeah. But deep in your heart, you know, it's not like the passion. It's not what. It's not. And you can't even put your finger on it. You're just like, the passion? Question mark? Yeah. Well, that's probably two people that needed to bring a star baby under the under the planet of Earth, I hear. Okay. So two people who had a contract. Yeah. And now, they could be two masculine energies. Yeah. It could be a woman and a dude. It could be however you identify. Two women, two dudes, two... Uh, however, they, them, however you identify, mm -hmm. but you could be two masculine energies in your whole relationship. Yeah, you've really had to work at this relationship. It doesn't really come naturally. Mm -hmm. And it's because you've got two prongs that are duct taped together. Yeah, we're really just trying to make this work. Too. And I see two rams ramming each other in the head. Yeah. There's no receiver. It's just two givers. Mm -hmm. And we duct taped it together, and every now and then we get this. Bzz, bzz. Yeah. Well, these two people may have been uh, brothers and sisters in a past life. They may have been parent child in a past life, something like that. So when they met in this life, they felt the connection. They're like, my soul remembers you. Yeah. Mm hmm. But something inside, yeah, it just it wasn't totally right. Yeah. Well, it was probably because you were a brother and a sister in a past life. Mm -hmm. And Spirit brought you together because you needed to, you may have children, you may have an experience you did together, something that had to be played out in this life. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah. When you understand that and you say, yeah, you know what, I think, I think we have, me and my counterpart are two masculine energies, yeah. When you understand that, you have an option now, yeah. You can understand that you are two alpha energies, two masculine energies, yeah. And somebody's got to submit energetically, mm-hmm. That can be really hard for a divine masculine if he's with, uh, well, I'll just say it this way, just for storytelling purposes. If he's with a woman mm -hmm, who is a masculine energy, and a divine masculine themselves is a masculine energy, and they believe in doing the right thing, uh, love, valor, yeah, being a gentleman, yeah. So a lot of times, this masculine, this man, will stand down in their energy, yeah, because their counterpart, their woman, is standing up, yeah. Well, energetically, that masculine has become a shrinking violet, I hear, yeah. So you get caught up in a loop of depression, sadness, because you can't stand in your emperor energy because the other person is energetically oppressing you. Yeah. And you start to understand the dynamic. Uh -huh. I hear nanny. I hear I'm a nanny. Okay. When you understand, people could have had um, affairs, something like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Sometimes. Yeah. And then for the woman, the woman's experience in this explanation yeah it's not like she's just like a bossy bitch no uh this masculine could have had suffered they might have known this masculine for a long time this dude falls apart yeah they have a meltdown they suffer whatever it is yeah i had to step forward take the fucking reins yeah i have some resentment for that mm -hmm. why don't you buy me fucking flowers dude yeah do you see all the shit i do yeah wake up yeah so then all this resentment starts. And, mm -hmm. Well, let's be able to throw a divine 
showgirl on the scene. Yeah, shake up that energy. Yeah, all of a sudden now. Yeah, uh-oh, wifey girlfriend. Who's that? Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at the pony dancer? Mm -hmm. Then it causes like triggering. Yeah. And either this couple now, if they're meant to be, if they're true divine counterparts, whether they're meant to masculine energies or not, yeah, if in this lifetime, if they're meant to be together, this new energy that kind of popped in on the scene, yep. They'll be like, oh my God, yep. Oh my God, yep. It woke them up a little bit, and now here they are. They're coming together, yeah. We're together, yeah. Or, mm -hmm, this new energy that comes on the scene will finally take these two that can't, yeah, yeah. We're done for good, yeah. I understand. Yeah. It was a scary move. I just needed this new energy on the scene. Yep, to finally make me. So Spirit will send in a muse for people. Mm -hmm. To either free them from oppression. Yep. Or to draw them closer. And finally, yeah, wake up both people of a really stale relationship. Either way, the wheel's going to turn on that relationship. Mm -hmm. And the more people heal and ascend up in vibration, yeah, is the more people say, Hey, I'm strong with my relationship with my person. Yeah, invite Jolene. Yeah, I like her. She's funny. Yeah, she can sing. She knows all these Dolly Parton songs. Yeah. She might have a great set of titties. Yeah. Or if you're still not doing the work, yeah. Mm hmm. Jolene's not coming to the party. Yeah. And it's probably going to suck. You're probably going to fight on the way there. Yeah. Fight on the way back. Yeah. Nobody's been laden forever. Yeah. So that's what. Yeah. All right. I have peace out. I love you. Okay. I, I speak the same language, dude. Here, hello, Ginger. Here, hello, Caraway Seed. Aren't you delightful? Let's go to Bavaria. All right, somebody may stand naked in front of someone. They may just open up. Mm hmm See, I haven't trusted anybody for a really long time. I have these insecurities, yeah. I'm just getting used to feeling good about myself, yeah. This is the whole collective of people who are like power nerds back in school days, yeah. Mm-hmm. Might have got picked on by the popular kids, that kind of thing. Yeah. Never got the experience that everybody else got. Yeah. Why am I such a fucking dork? Yeah, but now they're realizing. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Somebody may have Googled their bully. Yeah, the popular dude in high school that was just a fucking dick to everybody but their clique. Yeah. What is that? What is that person up to? Google him? Mm hmm. Find him on social media? Ooh. Yeah, dude goes to work. Looks like a lot. Yeah. Looks like he wears the same clothes that everybody in that collective wears, yeah. His wife's a second-rate version of everybody else, yeah. She looks like all those other hoes from that, yeah. The hoskies, yeah. They all dress alike, look alike, yeah. That dude that tormented me, that thing that hurt me, that person that, like, seemed to have it all, yeah. Guess what? That was their heyday. Junior year in high school. 
Oh, fuck. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, guess what, darling? Wouldn't you rather your heyday be going into the golden age? Yeah. <laughs> Enlightened and horny? Totally hot? Yes. Oh, my God. You actually won out. Yes, I did see that. Yeah, you're the real winner. Oh, my God. Darling, you went through the metamorphosis. Yes, you're a smoking hot cutie pie. And you're original. Yes. You stand out from the crowd. Oh my God. And all those people who couldn't handle you standing out from the crowd way back when? Yeah. Are now admiring you. Oh my God, what happened? Well, darling, it's true. You turned into a hot mother. God, congratulations, darling. Yes, you're about to get your divine counterpart. A sexy motherfucker, too.